This is like your cleanup hitter for the baseball team. It's like the... Yeah, classic yeah. Josh baseball reference. <laughs> Gotta slip it in. <laughs>Hey, welcome to the Food 52 Test Kitchen. My name is Josh Cohen, I'm the Test Kitchen Director here. I am the lucky guy today because I'm here with my wife, who is not only a wonderful wife, but she's a cheese expert. <laughs> That's why I'm such a lucky guy. <laughs> so we get a lot of questions from our community asking about what types of cheese should I serve for my party, or you know, how much cheese should I buy, that kind of thing. And I'm excited to have you answer all those questions, basically. Yeah, it can be so intimidating. So I, I'm really excited to talk about it because it doesn't need to be. First thing to think about, I guess, is variety. Definitely. So what do we got here? So we've got three different milk types represented on this board. Goat cheese, mm -hmm. cow, sheep's milk, and another cow's milk cheese. Goat and sheep are a little more specific. You know, goat cheese can be tangier, brighter, has a you know distinctive flavor, and sheep's milk can get a little deep and and sheepy, really. <laughs> uh, so it's good to have. I always like to have a little more cow's milk just for people who aren't quite as adventurous. In general, though, so for people who want to kind of replicate this, yeah. they're looking for a soft. This Tangy is your soft, cheese. it's your soft goat cheese. You're hitting the soft category here. Yeah, All and, right. the, and the goat category. Perfect. Then here you've got a semi-firm cow's milk washed rind cheese. That's okay. kind of the epitome of this guy. So it, this is gonna be a little firmer and it actually has what I call kind of a meaty texture. All right, but not all cheeses of this texture are like totally funky, right? The funk spectrum is large. So you could have very funky or hardly any funk. Yeah. All right. Then you've got your harder, long-aged cheese. So yeah. this is going to be firmer, drier, but generally a harder cheese has a, a more, you know, a bigger density of flavor. So this is more of a natural rind, and you'll get that a lot with harder-aged cheeses. And those have more of like a mustier, cave-like flavor. You get that in there. And then the blue. Now blue cheese, some of it will have a, a natural rind like this, some of it will come in foil, but generally, you know, you can't go wrong with a blue cheese in terms of a category that some people will really love, some people might be intimidated by. Now I can, I can already see certain people saying like, do I really, should I really put a blue cheese on my cheese plate? Like, can they just do three or what? Yeah, you can totally do three. I would say the two sort of swappable cheeses are yeah. the blue and the washed rind. I these see. are these are gonna be for the more adventurous crowd. You know, you've got the funkiness of the washed rind, that can be a little intense for some people. And not everybody loves the flavor of blue. Although today I've chosen a cream added blue, which is a good thing to keep in mind. The cream really sort of mutes the intensity of the blue. You are a blue cheese advocate though. It's I true. mean don't I see you're like holding back on your blue cheese love here. I love blue cheese. <laughs> I want blue cheese at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. If you're on your own, you're in your grocery store and there's not a lot of help there in person in terms of someone to chat with, to taste cheese with, use the visual cues because those cheeses are wrapped in usually in such a way that you can really tell. So with a washed rind, you're always gonna see sort of that orangey rind. That's a telltale clue. That's a washed rind cheese. All right. Then, and, and usually the cheeses in a supermarket will be labeled with the milk type. So you can also see with a fresh or soft goat cheese, they're gonna be smaller format. They're not gonna be huge pieces usually. And it'll say goat. So goat, you look for the orange rind on the wash rind, sheep's milk or harder cheeses. You know, you can actually pick up a piece and squeeze it a little bit too. You know, be gentle, but it's enough to give you a cue. With the soft cheese, you know, it also doesn't need to be goat's milk. Right. That category includes a brie style cheese or a triple cream. You know, anything soft with that whitish rind, it's gonna be perfect. So, we got our cheese basics. I feel like we understand now what we're going for yeah. in terms of cheese. I have the next sort of intimidating question. What about like accompaniments? This is a big one. What to serve with the cheese. Yeah. Think about the accompaniments as little bites that people can enjoy between tasting the cheeses. So you've got like major range of styles here, di very different flavors. Almost like a palate cleanser then. The accompaniment is more of a palate cleanser. Rather than like an add-on. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start with a classic, nuts. 
So I've chosen cashews today, which mm -hmm. is really a little bit unusual, I think. And I choose them for a specific reason, where you can see that there's no skin on the mm. cashews. Sometimes if you're serving like almonds with a skin, the skin has a drying effect. Almost like a bitter vibe. Yeah, to like it. what you can get from red wine sometimes, little tannins, huh. that kind of element. So what else do we have? Well, fruit and cheese is classic. Uh -huh. So I've got dried apricots, which I, I really love this specific dried fruit with cheese. Uh -huh. Apricots in particular. Apricots in particular. Okay. First of all, they're beautiful. Yeah. And especially if you're serving a washed rind cheese, mm. they kind of bring out the orange and the rind. Mm. And they actually, the citrus flavors in the dried apricots that kind of come through go really well, specifically with a washed rind cheese. So you have a bite of the cheese, so a bite of the fruit. Are, so these are, are like are. buddies, yeah. <laughs> so for me, dried apricots are usually my go-to, but fresh fruit, Whatever's in season can be great. Do we have a more mild cheese that would have sort of a softer accompaniment here? Yeah, I okay. think so. I've also brought a tomato relish. For me, going a little bit more into the savory realm is fun. And it could go with, you know, the delicacy of the goat cheese or even bring out some of the savory flavors in the sheep's milk. Mm -hmm. But I also think, you know, a lot of people serve crackers yeah. with cheese. Yeah. And for me, Crackers are not a vehicle for the cheese, but they can be a vehicle for something like a jam or chutney. You could actually even make a little bite for yourself. So you're at a party, you're eating cheese just. Cheese just. And then you use a cracker for the condiment, yeah. sort of like palate cleanser, Yeah. and then back to the cheese. And then back to the cheese just. just. changed everyone's life. <laughs> the problem is, <laughs> when you smear cheese on a cracker and you take a bite, you're often putting the cheese on top of the cracker and taking a bite. And then all that's hitting your taste bud is the cracker. Yeah. So you're kind of missing what out. What if you like put the cheese and like flip it in? Well, then you look I mean, crazy at ready. a party. Be right? ready for a whole disaster. All right, all right. So cheese just, cracker just. Yeah. The one exception is if there's a super soft cheese that's more of a spreadable thing and you really can't pick it up and eat it. Mm -hmm. All right, use the cracker. I see you have one last thing here. What is uh, that? Yes. So I brought some olives. And this is also more on the savory side. Don't mind me, let's keep going. <laughs> you know, olives to me have such depth of flavor. I like having them th just throughout a cheese board. The next important thing that we have to talk about is the temperature of the cheese. Mm. The cheese needs to relax. That's an overall adage of mine. All right. You want to serve cheese at room temperature, essentially. So it really depends on how warm the room is. If you're having a party and it's you know pretty warm, maybe take the cheese out 20 minutes before people show up. As the temperature of the cheese comes to like room temp, yeah. you think you're getting more flavor. You get way more. Now the next question I have is how are you gonna slice these different cheeses so that people can most enjoy them at a party? This is such a good question. And my preference is cut the cheese beforehand. Yeah. Otherwise, you're gonna have somebody come, you know, take a spoon, scoop out all the inside of the cheese and leave a weird piece. And you, you can decide, you know what, I don't wanna cut all the cheese because you also don't want it to dry out. Mm -hmm. So if you have a lot, it may be cut half of it and, and that gives people a direction of like how it should be cut. So let's start with the goat cheese. The way to do it is to go corner to corner on the diagonal. What you want to do when you're cutting cheese is to make sure that each person is going to get an equal part of the rind and sort of and the cheese paste. Right. So once you've cut on that diagonal, you use your middle, the middle point of the cut face, and that's where you're going to kind of radiate your pieces out from. So if we're cutting from so that middle. So you're making like little triangles, basically. Little triangles. All right. And by doing it this way. Everyone gets the same amount of rind, rind and You have a middle. democracy of rind. Wow, you know? wow. So with the washed rind cheese, you again want to kind of watch out for the stickiness of it. Mm -hmm. And on this, we've cut a wheel in half. And then we'll do the same thing, kind of radiate from the middle. So like I'm a guest at a party. Right. Can I eat the rind? What's going on? Aha. Yes. Eat the rind. Try the rind. Yeah. You always my my take on it is that you should always try the rind. You might want to be ready with like the apricot or a cracker just in case the rind is a little intense. You can eat any rind. And it won't as hurt long you. as it's not plastic. Yeah, and there's no rule at all. And in fact, yeah. there's some cheeses where I prefer the rind 
to the paste of the cheese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for a harder aged cheese, uh, you're gonna often start with a wedge like this. Mm -hmm. And these I love to cut. Take your chef's knife and you're actually gonna cut the rind off the top piece. So you kind of get that out of your way. Then you want each piece to have a little rind on the back and you're gonna cut these kind of perfect triangles from the top there. So then people have like a piece that's easy to pick up and you can fan them out really beautifully. So with a blue cheese, mm -hmm. I like to serve it a couple different ways. If it's firm enough and it'll handle it, you could do that same approach and just wedge. cut a little wedge. But it can get kind of wet and messy that way. Yeah, I see it's a little soft right? there on your knife. So, Another way to do it, and this is a lot easier and it's quicker and it's less precious. Okay. You don't have to worry about messing it up. Is you take the piece like this and you take any knife and you really just chunk it out. Chunk out the blue. Would you ever do that with a harder cheese too? I've seen that done with yeah. like more firm cheeses yeah. as well. Yeah, and this one is sort of borderline. Um, but chunking it out is nice. And then you can decide, okay, I wanna maybe put out some toothpicks for people if yeah. it seems like a little tough to pick yeah, up. Yeah, because this is a little... That's tricky. Okay. We have our cheese. It's cut, it's at room temp. Now the question on everyone's mind is, what are we drinking? We have four cheeses. I've chosen four drink pairings for okay. us to try with some guests, I believe. Welcome, Hi. welcome, hey. Food Fiji Test Kitchen. You want to tell the world uh, who you are, what you do, what's the deal? Uh, I'm Sean Lee. I'm the VP of People and Culture. Uh, my name is Katie McDonald, and I'm an assistant editor here. Cool. So we have cheese, like as if you were going to throw a party and invite your friends and family over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Four different sort of broad categories of cheese, and now we're getting into what kind of drink pairings should you have with these cheeses? The fun thing about having drink pairings with cheese is you're tasting the cheese, you're getting to know the cheese, but then the, the drink pairing comes in and what you want there is for the pairing to elevate the flavors mm. overall. Mm. Okay, let's taste. All right. Everybody grab a piece of goat cheese. Okay, this is a big piece. <laughs> you could just take you a could small bite. You could just nibble as much as you want. Now, so before you before taste you... it, <laughs> <laughs> That's totally fine. All right. You know what, there's nothing wrong with just going right for it. But you do have a fun opportunity when you're really thoughtfully tasting cheese right. to take, you know, sort of try to use as many of your senses as you can. You know, check it out, look closely. Like on this cheese, you've got this melty area right under the rind. It's really unusual. Um, and then you can also <laughs> squeeze it a little bit, get to know like, get what is cheese. what is this cheese all about? What is it about? And then you want to <laughs> smell it. The aroma is really important because on some cheeses, especially our next cheese, yeah. the aroma is going to be a lot different from the flavor. Mm. Mm. Super luscious, right? That's Creamy. Really, really comforting. Perfect <laughs> moment for some bubbles. Now. Take a little bite, mm -hmm. and let's mingle that bite with a little sip of the wine. Cheers. Okay. Cheers, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> that so good. Mm. So, we're tasting sparkling white wine. This is like, this wine has a lot of fruit sort of flavors in it. It's mm. very bright and lemony in and of itself, so I feel like it kind of brings out that note in the cheese a little bit. I like to do a textural pairing. Well, so, this like coats your mouth. Right, it's it coats very your mouth. Sort of fatty and rich. And then the bubbles. The bubbles kind of kind of wash, wash it out, out, right? Yeah. Wait, so is this the order that you would serve them in? Correct. Yeah. Why do Why do you choose that order? Ah, good call. Mm -hmm. So you really want to go from in in order of intensity. Next cheese, our washed rind, sort of a little bit funkier, a little bit intense. Go ahead and grab a piece. Okay. Now on this one. The texture is a lot different, right? Mm -hmm. oh, it's still pretty soft, but it holds together. It's not melting like the first. Mm. Would you call this like semi-soft? How do yeah, you call that? Yeah, exactly. Okay. What do you guys think of the oh, aroma? Wow. That is a strong aroma. And especially if it. you <laughs> smell it right on the rind. Oh. It's what does it mean, wash rind? Like we're calling this a wash rind cheese. What does that mean? Good question. So as this cheese ages out, the cheesemaker is taking a cloth that can be soaked in anything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just soaked in a brine sort of bath, but sometimes they'll take a cloth with uh, wine or spirits or beer and they literally wash the cheese with that soaked cloth as it ages out. 
and it facilitates the growth of a certain type of bacteria, a certain combination that gives it that funkiness. Okay, we're gonna take a bite of this and then we're gonna try our hard cider. Uh -huh. mm. A little less intense than the aroma, right? I think the flavor is more pleasing than the aroma. Yeah. I'll say that. Yes, oh, I, I agree. Yeah. I, was, I, I was a little I nervous about the time. aroma, but mm. it tastes good. Right, it's a good testament to like, don't be scared off too much by mm -hmm. cheeses that smell really, really intense. Yeah. Because the flavor actually is often much more subdued. This almost has a sweetness to it that I really love. Good. So this is like a stronger flavored cheese. Right. I'm gonna expect this to be like an equally strong flavored drink. You got it. All right. And on this pairing, we're really matching mm. funk with funk. I really like that. Okay, so now we've tried the washed rind. We've had some cider. It's kind of like a funk, a residual funkiness, you could say. Mm -hmm. So have a dried apricot. I I'm feel enjoying like, that residual. I know. It's I like don't want it to go like away. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. That happens. But so you use the accompaniments almost like a palate cleanser. Right. Mm. For me, having this after those two. Yeah. It we're, kind of brightens everything. Yeah. We're not necessarily it pairing it with the cheese itself in a single bite. It's sort of a way to kind of reset before you go on and eat more cheese. Next one? Next yeah. cheese. Okay, yeah. let's do it. Everybody grab a piece of this guy. So this is a firmer sheep's milk cheese. This is a Pyrenees style cheese. And so- You like to call it Alpine mountain cheese, right? Yeah, mo mountain cheeses of all kinds are, are some of my favorites because yeah. they're very unique. So let's smell this one. Now with a harder cheese like this, a good way to get a big aroma is to actually break the cheese and smell that part. Oh, good. <laughs> I good didn't save. waste my cheese. Good I didn't save. waste it. I caught it. Good. Good. <laughs> what do you guys think of this guy? I guess I felt like these are slightly out of my comfort zone and yeah. this is more like in my this comfort zone. Yeah. Very savory, salty. Yeah. If you're it's salty and, I don't know, like, yeah, yeah, there's totally a nuttiness going on there. And this is, you know, with, with sheep, so this is a sheep smoked cheese, and you're gonna get more of a, like, deep, savory, and if, and if you think about it, you can almost, like, take yourself into a barn. Okay, so, I don't often pair cheese with red wine. A lot of times you'll- Why is that? Well, you'll, you'll see- <laughs> I'm totally, yeah, I'm sorry. That's what I do, that's what I do all the time. So no, totally shame. Yeah. no shame, no uh, shame. At the end of the day, the other, beauty of all of this is that taste is totally subjective and if you like something, go for it. That's my approach. But the intensity of red wine can be hard to match. It can overwhelm cheese a lot um, or it can just, it's more likely to clash. So for me, if I'm gonna go with a red wine, I wanna do like a hard aged sheep smoke cheese, which has a lot of flavor. Like I took a bite a couple minutes ago and I'm still tasting yeah. the yeah. cheese, right? right? So try the red wine. Okay. So what do you guys think of these together? Like Every weekday, every weekday <laughs> night, cheese and wine. <laughs> Final pairing. The you blue. love this pairing. I love this pairing. This pairing <laughs> is like, to me, it's it blows any dessert out of the park. Okay, so we've got a cream added blue cheese. Let's all taste a piece here. It's a okay. little crumbly. Does it matter if we get lots of blue? Doesn't matter. It's gonna be delicious no matter what. Because this is a cream added blue, it's also a little more subdued, like it's not as intense as some other blues. The cream really kind of like tones it down a little bit. I my you ate your piece. <laughs> now, aroma wise, I mean, I get a lot of the blue, yeah. that blue cheese mold. I love blue cheese, but I'm not a gigantic fan of beer. Yeah, we're pairing so this one with beer. I, yeah. So and curious. also, I love dessert. <laughs> like, so I'm, I'm this is, skeptical. Yeah, I'm freaking of out. Okay. Whatever is about to happen, I'm really excited. Yeah. yeah so. Okay, <laughs> let's try the cheese and then take a sip of the beer. Mm. This is really good. I'm liking beer. Really good blue cheese. I taste like chocolate. It tastes like chocolate, like coffee. Mm. Roasty flavors are, in, are all over the place there. That's really like rich. Right? Yeah. Actually, it's like butter. Yeah, it's like, like velvet. It's like an excuse velvety. to eat butter yeah. straight up. Yeah. Which, no problem there. <laughs> it makes the beer taste like mocha. Yeah, I was gonna say, it tastes like, like chocolate. It's like a milkshake. Mm. Wow. How, how, did that, how did that happen? <laughs> what did you do? It's magic. It's I was gonna say, the <laughs> cheese tastes like mocha. But yeah. Well, to no, well, this, everything. this is like your classic one plus one equals three to yeah. me. It's like this together, they go to a whole different place. So we're tasting <laughs> a milk stout, which is, you know, it does have lactose in it. And that's what kind of like gives it a milkiness in and of itself. 
Thanks for tasting, yeah, you thanks guys. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, guys. This was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Once we're done with this video, we'll just keep eating it. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll come back. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. What to do now? You know, like, you've got some cheese left over, the party's yeah. over, it's been yeah, sitting yeah. out, is it okay to keep eating? The answer is definitely yes. Don't throw this cheese away. It's still good. It would be so sad. Yeah. It's definitely still good, and you wanna just make sure that you wrap it and store it in a way that's going to kind of keep it from drying out, but let the cheese breathe a little bit. I'm gonna use a little bit of the Food 52 beeswax, which is an awesome product. Um, and I'm just gonna rewrap the cheese that I have left over pretty snugly with this wrap because it will breathe. And so we wanna just like protect the cheese. Right. So with, with a piece like this, you might wanna trim it a little bit just to make it into an easier shape. Mm -hmm. um, but then you can just go ahead and wrap them all, store them in your fridge and you know, next day, taste them on their own. If they're starting to taste a little off or they're not quite as good as you remember from yesterday, mm -hmm. maybe you wanna make a grilled cheese or a mac and cheese, mac and cheese. or fromage fort. Mm -hmm. If you've got some leftover bread, just throw everything in the Cuisinart with some of that leftover wine, like a little a, garlic. Like a spreadable dip almost. Yeah, make your own cheese spread. Yeah. I love these pairings. I love the sparkling wine with that rich goat cheese, yeah. the funky cider, with the sort of equally funky wash rind cheese, mm -hmm. with that savory sheep's milk with the savory red wine, yeah. and then you blew everyone away with the blue cheese and the beer. Amazing. I like, I can't, I'm gonna have to, I don't know. It's the blue a, cheese yeah. and the beer, I'm just like. It's like you gotta go sit, sit alone. Send me home, yeah, I gotta like think about it, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I'm gonna go home yeah. and. I gotta clean up. You're gonna clean up. All right, I'll see Thanks. you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>